Hey, Southview online community. I'm Catherine, and we're so excited that you're joining with us today. The message is going to be amazing, and we know it's going to bless you. So let's go to the message. Listen, I love change. I really do. I, I, I love everything about change. I don't know if it's the creative part of my brain or the leadership part, but there's something about change that is exciting to me. In fact, there is so much love for change in our home that my wife will frequently rearrange furniture. We have family members that come over and go, it, was this normally like this? Did you have that? And, and it's like always keeping us on our toes. In fact, our kids now, they want to rearrange their rooms. And, and, and listen, if I had more hair, I'd probably rearrange my hair. I love change. I love change. In fact, a few years ago, some of you old school South viewers, you'll remember this. This is a long time ago. We, we actually changed the whole service and we put the service in the round. And it was just amazing to watch people come in and they were discombobulated. It's like, where, where do I sit? How do I? And, and I had people to this day telling me that was like such an amazing service. And then I had some people I think that left the church because they were just like, I can't deal with change. The one thing I know about the Lord is the Lord never changes. He is constantly and consistently the same. In fact, scripture says in Hebrews 13, eight, Jesus, the same yesterday, today and forever. And in Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. God never changes. So here's my question to you and even to myself today is, why does it feel like there's change in the air? Why, why do we feel like that there is a change coming to the church? I believe this, that it's not that God changes, it's that the church or us as Christians get off course. And so today, I know you're taking notes, write this down at the very top of your notepad today. The title of my message is The Divine Reset. The Divine Reset. I, I believe that this message is different in that it's more of a prophetic message. It's more of something that the Lord's been speaking to me personally through this whole quarantine season. I know many of us were coming out of the season and we feel like God has given us words and maybe he's spoken to you. Maybe you feel like, you know, I, I need to hear more from the Lord. Well, I believe this message today has been given to me by the Lord, specifically for me personally, but also for us as a church and, and also the global church. Matthew 24, if you would open your Bibles to that today, this is something I've been marinating on quite a bit in the last month or so. It's Matthew 24 is Jesus foretelling the destruction of the temple. And then he talk, starts to talk about the end times, okay? So for some reason, I don't know what it is, I just feel drawn to this particular passage in the last few weeks. But I know that as I'm reading it, I'm looking at it through a different lens because I believe the Lord is saying there is a divine reset. And so Matthew 24, verse 36 through 44, it says this. But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and they were drinking, they were marrying and giving in marriage until that day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the day and the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in a field, and one man will be taken, and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, and one will be left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect divine reset. There's something coming. When I was, when I was younger, actually a couple years before I was born, there was a movie called The Thief in the Night. It was 1972 and it was just amazing theatrical thriller where 
God comes and he raptures people away and this woman's left behind and she's having to run away from the mark of the beast and it was just this complete like thriller, scare the church and they'd show youth kids and they'd give their lives to Jesus because they're scared to die. And then a few years later, maybe 20 years or so, Kirk Cameron came out with this thing called Left Behind and it was the same premise, he was left behind and this whole kind of shock and awe, fear tactic of like, what if we're left after the rapture and we gotta fight off all these things. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you probably your theology is wrong. There are so many different opinions, difference of a theology of what the end times is gonna be like. In fact, there's churches fighting one another over, is God coming before? Is God coming after? What's it gonna look like? Let, let me just break it down to you real simple. Jesus says in Matthew 24, be ready. Just be ready, like just be ready. If you live your day every day as if it is the day, then you will make the proper decisions and live your life the way Christ wants us to live. In fact, Proverbs 27, one says, do not boast about tomorrow, for all you planners out there, me included, for you do not know what a day may bring. Now, I am a planner. I love planning and scheming for the future, but this whole COVID-19 quarantine time, I've had to say, okay, I don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. I don't know what the government's gonna tell us to do. In fact, I'm not even sure how to plan the week out. So every day I have to wait and I have to listen. And all of a sudden Jesus is going, hmm, sounds a lot like Matthew 24. Live every day as if it was, I'm coming back. Well, there's something that messes with me when I read this in Matthew 24. That Jesus, here's Jesus speaking this, by the way. Jesus is saying, even I don't know. Like, imagine that for a moment. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. We know that. He is making intercession for us. He's praying for us. And then all of a sudden, God kind of taps him on the shoulder and says, hey, hey, son, you, you ready to do what we talked about? Oh, oh, today, Dad, we're doing this today? Oh, yeah, we're doing it. Go get the horse. We're getting ready. And all of a sudden, Jesus is activated. To me, it's so profound that even Jesus doesn't know. The angels don't know. The Father in heaven is the only one that knows when all of this is going to go down. So, now back to what we said earlier. God never changes. But what happens is there are divine resets. And I believe we're in a season right now, in a particular moment of history, where God is wanting the church to be divinely reset. What if I were to tell you today that we as Christians are in a reset season? What if I were to tell you today that this pandemic, not caused by God, but it is in some ways a dress rehearsal for the church? Church, are you ready at any moment to step into history? Are we just, just walking around trying to do our services, trying to be good Christians, trying to go to church on Sunday, make sure you're in a family group, do all the Christian things, and we're missing the divine moment? I felt like this was a dress rehearsal for something. Now, how we come out of this, it should be different than when we came into this. And so here's my question to you. If you would, just turn to somebody next to you, and I want you to just ask them this question, okay? Say, how did you respond? How did you respond? In fact, if you just write that on the, on the chat today, I want you to write, how did you respond? Just kind of throw it on somebody else in there in the chat in the comment section. How did you respond? I know how I responded. And, and the reality is your response indicates your level of spiritual maturity. Now, I, I know this is gonna hurt some people, but I've had to hurt myself in the message in preparing this, that if you responded in fear, your level of spiritual maturity is not where it needs to be. It says, perfect love casts out fear. So if we respond to this pandemic in fear, then God is wanting to do a divine reset on us. Let's talk about Jesus. We've been talking about him over the last month and a half, two months. And the whole Jesus method is that whenever he preached, he was going for something deeper. Jesus, number one, taught the people as they were able to hear it. He taught them what they could understand. So my question to you right now internally, ask yourself this is, what can I handle? Like, can God tell me the mysteries of the world or am I too shallow or too full of fear that he couldn't share with me the depth and the knowledge of what he wants to do? I know this about children, when we see children, right? We talk to them because they can only handle a certain thing. So we, you know, we get down on their level, we're like, 
How are you doing? You, are you good? Oh, did you do poopy in your pants? Now, you would never talk to a grown adult like that. But we talk to our children. Why? Because we know they can't understand certain things. Like, you doing good today? Oh, you little schmoopy. You know, we talk to them like this. Now, if you went around and started talking to people at work like that, or at high school like that, you'd probably be thought of as a weirdo, a fool, or just somebody messed up. But the reality is, can God speak to you in a level of maturity. Number two, the common people heard Jesus gladly. Scripture says that Jesus would speak to common people in parables. He was able to communicate to them in ways that they would understand. So here's my second question to you. Are you glad to hear what Jesus is saying? Number one, can you handle what he has to say? Number two, are you glad to hear what he has to say? The divine reset. I, I, I want to share something with you. I got a prop here. Just hold on for a moment. I, I brought this computer. I, I borrowed this because um, this is an ancient prop. Maybe some of you have heard about one of these. These are called PCs. Have you ever heard of a PC? It was a personal computer. And uh, before technology advanced and people understood that this was old technology and we went to Macs, people actually use PCs. If you're a PC user, why don't you just type in I admit that I'm a PC user and uh, we'll, we'll have a recovery session. You can actually get in a side chat and we'll walk you through the five-step process of walking away from a PC. Anyway, this is a PC and uh, notice how dinky it is and how slow it is. Um, I digress. Anyway, I'm offending a lot of PC users. But the one thing I remember about being a PC user uh, back before I knew Jesus was you could hit three keys and it would reset your computer. You remember this? Some of you are like, I, I used this earlier in the day. If you use control, alt, and I don't even remember where delete is anymore. Where is delete? Oh, here it is. There, these three keys right here, you see that? If you hold them down, it would reset your computer. Control, alt, and delete. So can we break this down today? And let's talk through these three computers, because I believe the Lord is wanting to do a divine reset on us. So number one, control. You hit down control. This is what control does. Control enables the keyboard to perform a secondary function. So if you hold control by itself and you hit another um, key on this ancient artifact, it will actually activate a secondary function. Now, now follow me here. Control, okay? Jeremiah 29, 11. We know this one, right? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope, right? We know that. We, oh, that's my jam. That's, oh, I don't want to hit the mic. That's my jam. I love Jeremiah 29, 11. But did you notice in the very beginning, it says, for I know the plans I have for you. Some of us, we quote this, for I know the plans that he has for me. That's not how it's written. God is actually saying, I know the plans I have for you. You don't know these things, but you have to trust me that I have good plans for you. Now, we quote it, but do we really believe this? Because if it is, if this is control, number one, divine reset, control, control means that I enable him to perform, follow me here, a secondary function. Come on now, you follow, oh, I hear somebody amen me in the couch. You can allow God, as you release your control, you are allowing him to perform a secondary function. Now, might I pose to you this? It should have been the first function, right? Because his ways are higher, his ways are greater. But what happens is we begin to come off course. And so now we have to hit control to go back to what God entitled. Are you willing to release control? Number two is the alt key. The alt key is a modifier key. Hmm, interesting. It modifies things. Isaiah 43, 18. If you've been at South for any length of time, recently I've been sharing this has been a message or a scripture that has really ministered to me. It says this, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. For behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Think about this for a moment. The modifier key is something that changes what we've seen, okay? God is modifying 
our trajectory. Now, the interesting thing about it is when I read Isaiah 43, it says it springs forth. Okay, now I don't know about you. If I see something springing forth, <laughs> I see it. But then it says, do you not perceive it? Do you not see this? Church, are you not waking up? It is springing forth. This leads me to believe that we can literally miss a move of God happening right in front of us. And so the alt key is an alternative thing that we have not planned, that God has designed, that at any moment we need to say, stop, hold up, there is something new happening, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to alter, come on, to modify the course of trajectory for my life. Control, alt, the last one is delete. Okay, what is the delete key? Now look, look at this. It allows the deletion of a character ahead or on the cursor. Now, some of you remember when you hit delete, right? It's whatever the cursor's on. I'm going old school here. Somebody's like, what's a cursor? It, never mind. The, 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 whatever that little blinky thing is, that tells you you're going to delete that character. Follow me here. Matthew 9, verse 17. Neither is new wine put into old wineskin. If it is, the skins burst and the wine is spilled and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins and so both are preserved. The Lord is saying here today, delete. What is it? He's deleting your character. Oh, what? Follow me here. Many times we, we, we consider character traits part of who we are. I'll give you an example. I have a short temper, someone might say. That's not something you probably want to be proud of. Well, I, you know, I, I just, I live with a lot of fear. That's a character trait that God has not given you. Okay, many of us, we claim character traits that God has designed and desired to delete. Let me, let, me, let me rephrase that because God has not given you a spirit of fear. He did not design the spirit of fear. He's, given, he's designed a power of love and a sound mind. Power, love, and a sound mind. Power, love, and a sound mind. That is the character that God wants to give us. But the character we have to delete is the thing that is controlling us. You remember last week we talked about this. If you live for the crowds, you will die by the cliffs. If you live for whatever is going to try to control you, it will ultimately lead to your demise. For many of us, God is trying to control all and delete the things that we consider normal. Listen, let's go back to this. I'm going to put this away here for now. I want to send that back to the Smithsonian. But here's, here's what we're going to do. Matthew 24. I, I, I took a piece out of it, but really it's a, it's a whole sermon that Jesus spoke on. And what we do sometimes is we take things out and we, we lose the context. Okay, so Jesus is speaking about, number one, the destruction of the temple. He's talking about the signs of the times, the end of the age. And then he starts to speak. Look, he starts to talk about the wise and the wicked servant. He talks about the 10 virgins, and he talks about the parable of the talents. Now, we could preach messages on each one of those things, but the reality is what Jesus is saying is, make sure you're observant to the sign of the times, because if you're not like the wicked and wise servant, the story, like the 10 virgins, and like the talents, you're going to miss something. Don't miss something. Matthew 25, verse 40 says this, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. What does that mean? Jesus was speaking to his followers and they were saying, when did we help you? When did we serve you? He said, when you serve the poor, when you help the least of these, when you help the orphans and widows, you are actually helping and serving me. So what is Jesus saying here? Wrap it all up, Pastor Mark. What he's saying is, don't lose focus. Because many of us in the church today, we have a diverted vision. This is what he's saying. He's saying the end is coming. And when the end comes, even I don't know when it's coming, but it's going to come. And the challenge for you, church, is to not lose 
focus. Don't divert your vision. Don't be all over the place. Don't be looking all at the wrong things. There's a movie that we watch at our house called Up. Anybody know Up? It's about a man who blows all these balloons up. His house kind of floats and he goes to another land. It's completely true. But the reality is one of the things, there's this dog who's his buddy and the dog can talk. Again, all true. And the dog is so diverted. He goes, squirrel! And he starts looking somewhere else. It's like in the middle of a conversation. Squirrel! And he, he loses focus. And I feel like prophetically, that's been the church. We're diverted our focus on the lights and the sound and the buildings and the events and the activities and the numbers and all these things. And meanwhile, we're like the five virgins of the 10 that didn't have enough oil for their lamps. Come on, you can read this. Or we're like that one servant who buried his treasure, his talent. Come on. He buried it underground thinking, well, I got plenty of time and missed the moment. Don't miss the moment. Don't miss this moment. There is a divine reset happening to the global church. Now, some of you may say, you know, I, I feel like I've heard this message spoken by other people. Do you realize it's because God is trying to get the word out? <laughs> things are looking pretty shady right now. I'm not sure you know these things. If you, if you got out of your house for any moment of time, you're seeing things that you never thought you'd see. I, I go to Kroger and I'm like, Leanne, when did we have so many surgeons walking around? I, I, I make a joke, but people are wearing gloves and masks and people are doing things I thought we would never do. What happened? The times are changing. And if we don't keep our focus on the things of the Lord, we're going to have to control, come on now, all and delete the things that we're doing. So, I want you to write this down in the chat, write it down on the comments, or just shout it to the neighbor next to you. There is a new normal. I want you to say there's a new normal. Now again, I'm coming back to the very beginning. I like change. So when I hear that, I'm like, I'm, oh, I'm, not, I'm ready for the new normal. Some of you are like, oh geez, I, I wasn't even sure about the regular normal, now we got a new one. I, I'm telling you, when God shows up, we control all and delete whatever plans we have and we focus our attention, our gaze on him. There is a new normal. I believe scripture says in Matthew 24, says this in verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed. I love this. This has given me so much hope. I've highlighted it here in purple. I, I don't know what purple saying, royalty. There you go. The gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Pastor Mark, are we in the end times? Listen, I don't know. Jesus doesn't even know, so I'm not about to tell you when it's happening. All I know is things are lining up a lot closer to the word than ever before. And I'm telling you right now, I am holding fast to Matthew 24, verse 14. The kingdom of God is going to be proclaimed across the world. Can I say something to you right now? We've had more people watch our online services than ever before. People are checking into churches all over the globe. They're hearing the gospel like never before. Somebody's watching this right now and you don't even go to Southview. You stumbled across this. You're hearing this and you're going, I don't even know why I'm fixated on this message and this worship because the Holy Spirit is wooing you because we're seeing the scriptures played out and I don't wanna miss this. There is a new normal coming to the church. More questions for you today. I'm, I'm marinating on this, I'm gonna pass it along to you. What if the tension in your spirit today is actually birthing pains? Now, I'm living in this moment right now. I got a wife at home right now having things called Braxton Hicks. For those of you that don't know, those are the precursors to the, to the real thing. They're the, they're the, I wouldn't say they're fake labor pains. My wife would hit me in the face if I said that, but they hurt. And what happens is her body is now beginning to get ready for birth. And so my wife told me the other day, she goes, I, I sense, I can feel something happening. I said, right now? No, she said, no, just things are shifting. The baby's shifting. Why? Because we're getting close to the due date. 
And I know this because this is my ninth kid. I, I kind of am a professional at this. My wife would say I'm only a secondary professional, but I've seen a lot of things. Uh, I, I know this, that the body gets ready in those moments because it's getting ready to birth something new. But you can't have birth without the pains. Why? Because there's a stretching coming. And that stretching is good in order for the new thing, the new normal to come out. So that tension you're feeling could very well not be last night's dinner. It doesn't have to be the devil. You're rebuking the devil. Devil, get behind me. What if it's the Holy Spirit bringing tension in your life to say, are you ready for the new normal? What if the confusion you feel, because scripture says where there's confusion, there's every evil work. But what if the confusion you feel is actually the spirit of revelation directing a new normal? It's not God giving you confusion. It's just all of a sudden the way you did things before don't seem to work anymore. There's an old saying, if you continue to do the same things over and over again and expect a different result, that's insanity. So the church today, are we being insane by trying to do the same thing when God says, I am bringing a spirit of revelation to you so that you can communicate the gospel in a fresh way. Are you excited about this? Come on now, I need somebody to say amen right now in the comments, in the chat right now, because if you're excited, I wanna let you know, this has been marinating in me the last few weeks. I am actually more excited to be in this day and age. I feel like this is a historic time for the church. So, what does God need to do in you today? Control? Maybe we need to relinquish control. Remember I said, if you live for the crowds, you, you're going to die by the cliffs. Jesus knew that it wasn't about allowing the people to have their way with Jesus, but that Jesus could speak the truth. Are you willing to allow Jesus to speak the truth to you and have him take over control? Maybe it's the alt key. The alt key is allowing God to make alterations. Let me share this analogy. When, when, when we get our phones and we're going somewhere we've never been before, what do we do? We, we punch in Waze or, or Google Maps, right? And you put in the destination. That destination's fixed. But what if you're driving and you come up to an unexpected construction and you're sitting there, you have a choice now. Do I sit in here and wait for this thing to change and be affected or do I take an alternate route. Now, here's the good news. The alternate route, although it may not be the planned route, it will ultimately get you to the destination. For many of us, we are so stubborn in staying in the same lane that we're wasting time and we're missing our destination. When God says, look, I'm not changing. You just got off course. I'm giving you an alteration so you get back on to the destination. Oh, that's a, that's a good word right there. I hope you got that because I'm getting it right now. And the last one is delete. I don't want to expect God to give fresh new wine and fresh anointing. God, give us your anointing. Pour out your spirit. All the, the things we shout out to the Lord. We want revival fire, all those things. Yet we're still holding on to the old wineskin and we're expecting God to fill it up. And God says, if you want what you're asking for, it's going to rip the skins and everything's falling apart. Let me give you a new analogy. It's not the wineskin, it's the church. Can the church, can you, okay because it's not the building we know that we're having church right now and we're not in a building together you're the church I'm the church can we handle the fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit or will it rupture who we are control all delete a divine reset we are in a pandemic dilemma what does that mean well these are questions that I want to ask you and I've Asking myself, number one is, how did you and I respond to this pandemic? Think, just think about that for a moment. How did I respond? And here's my second question is, how did you want to respond? You know, for, for some of us, you know, we, we, we started thinking of, of man, my, my mind started going crazy. I, I thought I'm gonna have to go buy extra socks because we don't have any toilet paper. I, I digress. You put that together. Anyway, what I am saying is, is maybe how you responded and how you wanted to respond was not the same. And my last question to you is, is how will you respond? Because there's still time. Because I could see the Holy Spirit here today. He is hitting control, alt, and delete. He is wanting to 
reset, a divine reset for the church today. Don't miss this. Again, this is a prophetic message. Don't miss this church. God never changed. We may be off course. Just a thought to ponder here today. Let me ask you this. If you're watching this today and you don't know Jesus, then I guarantee you there is a divine reset coming to you today. You cannot expect to live life to the fullest if you don't have the designer of life living inside of you. The author of life is the only one that's going to make this world worthwhile for you and I. And so today, if you're watching this, and you stumbled across this, or maybe you've been watching Southview for the last few weeks, or maybe you've attended and you never gave your life to Jesus, there's good news. Romans talks about that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and it says if you believe in your heart that Christ was risen from the de dead, that God raised his son from the dead, then you shall be saved. If you confess and you believe, then Jesus will be Lord of your life. That is the best divine reset that you'll ever make. And so today, if that's you, if you're here today watching or listening, and you wanna give your life to Jesus, all you have to do is just ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Jesus, come in. I confess you that you are the King. You are my Savior. You're the Lord, and I give you full reign, and I confess that I'm a sinner. Without you, I would be going to hell, but because of you now, I have eternal destination in heaven. If you say that and you believe that, Jesus becomes your Lord, and we want to know about this. And so make sure you contact us. Let us know, and you can actually contact us on our app now and just kind of let us know who you are and let us know your decision you made, and we would be more than happy to connect with you and walk you through the greatest decision you'll ever make. Church, I believe this today, that we are in a moment of history for the church that is like no other. And I'm so excited to be alive today. Thanks again for joining us here today at Southview. We're so excited that you did. If you want more information on how to connect with us, you can do so at our website. And I hope that you have an amazing week. We love you.